Hello, brethren. Praise the Lord again for another opportunity to meditate, to search through the scriptures for our livelihood, for our purity, for our connection with God, our Father. And this time round, I come with a portion. I was challenged by scripture from the book of Acts chapter 17 and beginning from verse 10. And we are going to talk about a group of people called Bereans, and they are called noble Bereans. Listen to this and you'll get challenged and maybe grow your spirituality, grow your search for scriptures. And in this portion of Acts 17, verses, and I want us to begin verses 10 and end at 12, the Bible says... Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded. He's referring to the Bereans in verse 11. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. In verse 12 of therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks prominent women as well as men. Praise God, brethren. God is good that he keeps revealing himself variously. And this time round, he reveals himself in this book of Acts of the Apostles. And particularly in this chapter of 17, and this time when Paul and his entourage are moving on, they are continuing with the ministry. The church expanded in those early years. And one of the key persons in these acts is a man called Paul, who had formerly been Saul, the persecutor of the church. But of course, that story we need to read, dig deeper, and know what it entails. Now, in this chapter 17, Paul continues with his missionary journeys. And actually, the book of Acts, the way the word suggests Acts, it refers to doings. It refers to works. Not mere words, but things that are visible, things that are done, people see well, they, some of them are hard. And so the works, the acts of the apostles pioneered by the Holy Spirit. And so some people have said, yes, these are acts of the apostles, but they can also be acts of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that empowered, that empowered these apostles to do what they did. And so, this particular community, of course, the Bible mentioned several communities here as Miletus, Thessalonica, Berea, Colossi, Philippi, so many of them, Rome, many, many communities in the book of Acts uh, that culminated into the letters that we read that Paul wrote, the Romans, Corinthians, Colossians, Philippians, Thessalonians, Name them. Now, here, the particular community that challenged my faith are these people called Bereans who received Paul. They received him. And you know, Paul's culture was actually to keep entering the synagogues to go and preach and share the word of God. Now, this particular group, Bereans, received the word of God. Like anybody else, like any Christian believer, they received the word of God. 
But what challenges me is the readiness of mind that they were eager to hear the word. And therefore they are referred to as noble Bereans. And the nobility is something to do with having or showing fine personal qualities or high moral principles. And of course, this is what is lacking very, very much in our community now, in our society. Noble people, we are having, if there are any, then there are very few. And it's my desire, it's my heart's desire that I can be among those that can be referred to us as noble people, someone who has a high moral quality, high moral principle. So the Bereans received, but they not just receive, but the Bible says they searched the scriptures. And so it's something that I want to challenge us, want to challenge me, that, well, because of the teachings that were so many and they were various, these people shows, show us the quality of searching the scriptures, to know the truth, to reach the truth, not just hearing and ending there, but they searched the scriptures. And another word that I want to introduce here is double-checking, to double-check what is being said. And so they double-checked for the truth, for the soundness of the teaching, because there are, Paul knew that there, were, there would be people who would come in, with the falsehoods. I mean, these Bereans also knew that there would be people who would come with the falsehoods. And so they would keep double-checking for the truth, for soundness. And so my brothers and sisters, even in our generation, we need to double-check what we hear. We need to double-check what we read. Not everything that is, is written about is is the, the truth about what God wants us to do. Not everything that is preached is the truth about what God wants, wants us to do. The reason why these days we talk about cults and occult, occultism, people coming with false messages and they relay them as though they were the truth about God. But what we need to do, like the Bereans, these people that we read about, um, when they received Paul in their synagogue, the Bible says that they searched, they double-checked the truth. And so my challenge that comes to me, the challenge that comes to you is searching the scriptures. And so do you have the word of God? Do you have the Bible? Do you read it? Do you search? Is it your daily food? Yes, we have little books, devotional books called Daily Bread, uh, Daily Guide. Do you have, do you search on the daily basis that you deep, dig deeper into the mind of God? Because this Bible talks about it's the mind of God. And so that you may know the truth about what God wants you to do, what God wants you to say, how God wants you to behave generally. And so our generation is soiled with falsehoods, so many things that are not right. People want to go with the majority, people want to go with the many, even when they are wrong, they want to go along with them. But the Bereans said, no, 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 Paul, we have listened to you, but we want to search and see whether what you are saying is the truth. And they are commended here for what they did. And so, my brothers and sisters, what we encourage you to do, like Paul mentions to the uh, to his son Timothy, his son in the faith, Timothy in his second letter to him, like he said to him, he says to us, Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. And the Bible says, now, but let's begin from verse fourteen. Second Timothy two fourteen fifteen. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, no struggling, no striving for words to ruin, to destroy the listeners. And Paul knew what it would mean when people are fighting over words. Like now our generation, we fight, we strive over words that destroy the listeners. 
And so we need to take caution and precaution. And in verse 15, the Bible says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Bereans did exactly this. Can you, my brother, can you, my sister, do likewise, being diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, a person who rightly divides the word of truth, rightly searching, rightly reading, rightly interpreting. We have gadgets these days that help us to unveil the meaning. And you, must, you also need to be careful that some of them could be diluted because we are living in the world of counterfeits. Even money, you find counterfeit money. Even, you know, things that you go to go and buy a flat iron, you will find a flat iron, this one is original, this one is duplicate. So we are living in a world of duplicates. And so my brothers, why the Berean is searched is because of these duplicates that are. And so Paul mentions this to the to Timothy to do what he to do his best to search the scriptures because we are in a world of counterfeits, a world of duplicates, so that you remain original and God will say, thank you very much. And in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Timothy still, chapter 3, verse 16, as I end, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, the Bible says this, um, 16, 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for doctrine, that's one, two, for reproof, three, for correction, four, for instruction in righteousness. So my friends, this is serious, that the man of God may be complete, amen, to be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We need to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We need to be thoroughly equipped. We need to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Bereans have proved it, that they search the scriptures for every good work, and we need it too, in our generation, to be, um, to be, to be equipped for every good work. So may the God who has started this good work in you keep it to the finishing line, that you will not be ashamed while you serve the Lord, and that you will not be derailed because of the counterfeits, the duplicates, but that you will stick to the truth, searching scriptures day by day, that you will grow and you will be equipped for every good work, that people will be able to see and test and say, yes, praise the Lord, that God is able to do this such a thing in this woman or this man, this man, this young man or this old woman, and that we shall always be a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>